In this tutorial I'll show you a few things you can do when motion tracking in After Effects doesn't work. So here's a clip I got from one of my clients after she almost cried that no matter what she's doing she can't make the tracker follow the yellow bulb. All I want to do is attach a simple lens flare to this bulb but no matter what I do After Effects fails to track this clip she says. Now obviously I'm exaggerating this just to build some drama here, but at the same time I also want to reassure you that by the end of this tutorial you will know how to solve this problem and in the process I will also pass along more tips that will help you to use the tracking tools in After Effects in a more efficient and predictable way. Now this video is part of a series about tracking in After Effects and I encourage you to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when new content is available. Ok, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. So I'll start by selecting the layer and this time I'll go to the animation menu and I can choose track motion from here. And this is going to open the layer in the layers viewer as well as show me the tracker panel in case it wasn't on screen. I'll take the tracker point one, wait for the double headed arrow because I want to move the entire group and I'm also going to scrub the timeline to the place that I can see the bulb. So I'll start over here in this frame and then I'll take it and drag the entire group on top of this specular highlight which should be a good place to start the tracking. Now I want to show you the result that After Effects is going to give you by default. So I'll press on analyze forward and you can see that After Effects is getting totally confused and it's not generating a successful result when tracking this very fast paced motion with a lot of motion blur. So I'm going to basically undo and I'll zoom into the shot by pressing on the period key and then what I'll need to do is define a larger search area as well as maybe also enlarge the region of tracking. So this is the search area. I'll expand it so After Effects is going to search in this area in the next and previous frames. And then I'm also going to enlarge the feature region. I'm also going to click on the options button here and quickly show you that you can name your tracker. I'll name this one bulb since in an upcoming tutorial I plan to show you the corner pin tracker to track this frame. And I want to differentiate between those two trackers. You can also choose which channel you want to track, RGB, luminous or saturation. I guess Luminous is going to give you the best success, but you can try other stuff in case you have more details in saturation or maybe the RGB. You can also try to enhance the video before the tracking, as well as tick this option if your video has fields. Sub pixel positioning should always be turned on, and this means After Effects is going to divide each pixel and track within the pixel to give you a more accurate result. And then you also have this feature to adapt on every frame. And this sometimes can be very helpful if you have changing lighting across your video. But I'm more concerned with this pop-up menu. So I will change it from continue tracking to stop tracking if the confidence is below 80%. And this is also my recommended way for you to work. Now, after this very long buildup, I'll click OK. I'll zoom out by pressing Option and forward slash and I'll click Analyze Forward. Now it will take more time to process, but the good news here is that you don't need to do anything. After Effects is going to handle it for you, but it's a good idea to watch this and if there are any problems or issues, you can always stop the tracking. I'm going to do it right now. And you can move the entire group. Just make sure that it will be on top of the desired location. So let's continue to track and for the sake of the recording, I'm going to speed it up. Now, since we defined in the options that it should stop after losing its confidence, you can see that once this is out of the search region, the tracker has stopped. It's not going to create unused tracking points. But now we can return to the timeline. We can press U to see the keyframes and we can manually help the tracker. So over here in this frame, I'm just going to drag it and place it above the desired location. And then I'll press page down to move to the next frame. And I'll manually move the tracker using this system. So this one wants to be over here. 
And you can see that once you reach the edge of your frame, the edge of the comb, you can't move the tracker point. However, you can move the attach point, which is the relevant information for us. So I can move it outside of the frame, and then I can press page down once again, and just try to extrapolate where it will be when this is going to be outside of the visible comb. So something along those lines should work. Now let's go all the way back to the beginning of our tracking, which in my case was frame 14. And I'm going to analyze backward until the tracker is going to fail, which is going to happen over here. And then I'll move one frame forward just to see where is the last good point. So over here, and basically we can mark here on all of these redundant keyframes and delete them and then press page up to go one frame earlier and manually do the same thing that we did before. So I'm basically guessing where the light bulb should be. And just to verify that everything works, I'll grab the CTI and drag to the right and just look at the attach point, making sure that it is above the yellow bulb across the entire duration of this clip. Now, here is the cool part. I'll select the layer, go to the effect menu, and from the generate category, I'll add the lens flare effect. I'll change the lens type to 105 millimeter prime, and I'll return to the tracker, making sure I'm selecting the tracker point one here in the timeline. And this is just going to show up all the details here for the tracking. Then I'll click on edit target and I can apply the motion directly to the effect point controller of the lens flare effect. So in this case, the flare center. I'll click OK and then I'll click apply and then again OK to apply both dimensions X and Y. And this is going to bring me back to the composition so I can press spacebar and preview the result. Looks very good. Let's wait for the end. And what I need to do is just add keyframes so I can close the motion trackers, open up the effect and animate the flare brightness. So I'll start by creating a keyframe over here, set it to zero. Then I'll press page down to move forward until I can see the bulb in its full glory bring it back to 100% and then I'll do the same thing at the end. So once it is out of frame, I guess somewhere over here, I'll create another keyframe, keeping the 100% value. And then I'll move a few frames into the future and reduce the flare brightness to zero. Let's go to the beginning and preview the animation. And as you can see, it works really nice. Now, it's very important to say that this is possible only when you are applying an effect directly to the motion source layer. I want to show you another way to work if you need to tie the data to another layer. So I'll pause the playback and I'll switch to this composition where we can see this cute girl that seems to have a great idea and I want to indicate it by attaching a particles fountain to her index finger. Now I already took care of the tracking process and to show you how it looks, I'll double click on the footage to open it in the layer viewer. And then I'll reveal the motion trackers in the timeline, twirl down the tracker number one, and you can double click on the tracker to load the data to the tracker panel. Now, if I'll scrub the timeline, you can see that I've used the same principles to track her finger and then manually move the tracker to follow it when it is out of frame. Now, notice the track type here in this case is set to row. So we need to connect it to something that will follow it. So I'll go back to the composition and create a new solid. I'll name it particles and apply the CC Particle Systems 2 from the simulation category. Now, just to save some time, I'll share with you the values that I came up with by trial and error. So the longevity will be one second. 
I'll open up the physics and I'll choose the direction animation and set the velocity to 0.3. I'll set the particle type to faded sphere. Birth and depth size will be 0.1. The size variation wants to be 100%. And the birth color, I'm going to sample it from her skin, so something pinkish like this. And I'll set the death color to white. Finally, I'll set the transfer mode for the particles to add. And now I'll open the producer and double click on the position to reveal it in the timeline. And now I can use the link peak whip to connect it to the attach point of the tracker. And this is going to do the magic. So now the particles are connected to her finger. Now, since this effect supports motion blur, we might as well turn this option for the layer and now we can preview the result. Such a cool effect and quite easy to pull off once you understand how the tracker thinks and what you need to do if it doesn't work, which is to use your input and help it to cross that bridge. And with that, we arrived to the end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking until the end. It means so much to me. And because you are still here, I can tell you that in the upcoming video, we learn a cool trick to extrapolate the tracker motion using expressions. So stay tuned for that. But until then, let's virtually shake hands and say goodbye.